Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer and welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling, the channel dedicated to wrestling video games fueled by my love, passion, and obsession for them. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, playing WWF WrestleMania 2000 on the N64, part of the legendary series of Aki wrestling games, one of my favorite series of wrestling games, and I am bringing you another call, a follow-up in a way to my Dr. Death call from a couple of weeks back. It is none other than Terry Bam Bam Gordy, even though I'm just realizing I didn't put Bam Bam in his name, but whatever. Terry Gordy, part of the infamous fabulous Freebirds, and he didn't really have many appearances in WWF, but I feel like he really fits in this game, and I'll explain why later on. First, I'm gonna go over the appearance. As always, in the description below, you can find the full call typed out in a nice little template Google spreadsheet. I have everything in there, the moves, the fighting style, the points, even though I show you a little bit of that right now, you can see that all typed out in the description below, so make sure you check that out. But right now, let's go over his appearance. So we got body size 5, skin tone 1, I went with skin tone 1, you could, you could also go with skin tone 0 if you feel like, but I went with skin tone 1, ring attire 0. Uh, very basic outfit, old school wrestler man, just short tights and that's it, knee pads and boots and you're ready to go, you're ready to kick ass with Terry Gordy. I did give him an entrance attire though, uh, basically a stone cold vest, 2121, just make it black so you don't see the stone cold. Uh, you know, he, sometimes he would come in with a hat, like a cowboy hat and stuff like that, but I just gave him the vest, just a little, a little something extra. Head, we went with head zero, uh, once again, skin tone one, I don't know why I always show the skin tone for the head, it's the same as the body. Face 30, that's the face I chose for Steve Williams. Hair, um, Steve Williams, Terry Gordy, excuse me. I'm thinking of their tag team. Six, hair one, um, and then browned. Hair 230, again, brown, number one skin, tour, skin color. I can't talk today. Forgive me. Front hair 30, I should say. Wristband one, uh, we went with white. As always, every everyone wears white wristbands. Knee pad, I went with knee pad two, and for the color black, number twenty one. That's the dark black. Uh, you keep, could keep it regular black, but I I don't like how like the regular black looks kind of green. I don't know. It's just me. Feet one zero and eleven. There I went with the lighter laces because I wanted the laces to pop just a little bit more, not be completely black. But that's it. It's very. Very simple call for Terry Gordy. He had a variant where he wore white boots sometimes. So that this is his white boots variant. Um, white number two for the color and then zero for the laces. As for his third outfit, um, now his third outfit is kinda his Freebirds outfit. When he wrestled with the Freebirds, free he wore a bunch of different stuff. They had very colorful outfits that you can't really sort of emulate in the game. The best I could think of was when they wore the red tights and all of them wore the same like red tights with red knee pads. Uh, I think maybe Michael Hayes had a red elbow pad or maybe it was it was uh, Buddy Jack Roberts. But this is also another sort of variant on that. I've also seen him wear uh, black ring tights with red knee pads and red boots. So this could be like your sort of like if you want to Michael Hayes is in the game. Michael Hayes is in the game at the time, you know, he was managing the Hardys. Uh, so he's included in WrestleMania 2000. If you want to recreate the Freebirds, uh, you can put Michael Hayes in sort of like the red tights and have him team up with Terry Gordy. I mean, that's something I kind of did when I was making this call. Very fun. But there you go. Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Uh, very legendary wrestler that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough, you know, and, th and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make him in this game, but he's also in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, my favorite game of the Aki series, and that's pretty much what I did is I ported him over from that game, essentially, all his moves, parameters, all that stuff comes over from WrestleMania 2000, so again, check the comment in the description below for that link. I like to make these calls like it's 1999 all over again using the vanilla version of the game. But Terry Gordy, Terry Gordy was at the twilight of his career at this time. His legacy really extends to the early 80s. He started wrestling when he was 14. I didn't know about this until I started doing research on him. And he was only 19 when he started with the Freebirds 
in like the late 70s technically I think 79 is when they officially got together I believe and for the next like half of the decade the Freebirds would run a muck along the territories and NWA and all these different um, promotions where they were one of the top heel tag teams in the country they were very flamboyant they were very obnoxious um, and but they did a lot of things that influenced tag team wrestling as we know it today they credit themselves as coming in with entrance music before anyone else and that's not entirely accurate there were a few other wrestlers that did use entrance music I guess what was most notable about their entrance music is that they came into Freebird by Leonard Skinner and that started the trend of like rock music being introduced into professional wrestling at least in the states because you know, Gorgeous George, for example, he would come out using like pomp and circumstance. And there was a few other wrestlers that used like sort of like classical tunes. But the Freebirds, they were coming out to like, you know, Leonard Skinner. They were coming out to rock music. Eventually, music started getting wise to it. And, you know, these promotions couldn't use the music anymore because of copyright. So they made their own song uh, sung by Michael Hayes called Bad Street USA. It was their, That was like their Freebird theme. They're very proud of it. I, it's not a great song, but it fits the group and it you know, makes you want to boo them too because it's a very obnoxious song. Uh, and that was just added to their whole shtick. Another thing they did, which everyone probably used but probably doesn't really know where it comes from, is the Freebird rule. That started with their group. They were a three-man team, but they would win tag titles. So they would switch it, you know, it, sometimes it'd be Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy defending the title. Sometimes it'd be Michael Hayes and Buddy Jack Roberts or Terry Gordy and Buddy Jack Roberts. That was the Freebird rule. Even though they were a three-man team, they still had to defend the tag team titles as a two-man group. So they would switch depending on the match and the circumstance involved with their group. You know, they were all over the place in the 80s, the WCCW Memphis, where they had a feud with Jerry Lawler and his group. Jerry Lawler's also in this game. You could, you know, re uh, reignite that feud with Gordy and uh, Michael Hayes and Jerry Lawler. Uh, most notably, though, the Freebirds and the Von Erics. That was like the feud uh, specifically in the, in, the, in the early 80s, the Freebirds versus Devon Eriks. Um, they have some of those matches on the WWE Network, but you can find more matches and better matches uh, between the two on YouTube or Daily Motion. Highly recommend seeking those out. But in the rest of the decade, Terry Gordy would find a lot of success in Japan. And much like how I talked in my Steve Williams call for WWF WrestleMania 2000, Terry Gordy and Steve Williams would be a very successful tag team in Japan called the Miracle Violence Co Connection. But he also had another great tag team with Stan Hansen, another legendary wrestler around this time. And as a singles wrestler, you know, Terry Gordy was a big dude. But the thing about Terry Gordy, he was very surprisingly agile and and very fast. He would have these insane bursts of speed and power that would come out of nowhere. He was the third person to ever hold the Triple Crown title. It was technically like the fourth reign for that title, but he was the third individual to hold it. He defeated Jumbo Saruta, um, but would lose it really quickly, like three days later. He would lose it to Stan Hansen, who would lose it back to Gordy. 39 days later, so he's a two-time Triple Crown champion, but then, and I couldn't find too much information on this, so let me know in the comments below if you know more about these details. He had to vacate the title because he was hospitalized, and I couldn't find out if that was like a wrestling angle he was hospitalized, or if he was hospitalized because he got sick, but basically, or if something else happened behind the scenes, basically, he would dr vacate the title and Hansen would get the title in a match against Misawa. Here I go, I'm getting my special against The Undertaker. I chose Undertaker because after his stint in Japan, you know, in the in, in around 93, he had an overdose of like pain medication and he slipped into a coma. He suffered brain damage. So he was never the same after that. And like I said in the beginning of this, you know, in the late 90s, you know, he bounced around. In 96, he was in ECW for a little bit. And then later on, he would be in WWF, where he would wrestle as the masked executioner. And they kept him under a mask, according to Bruce Pritchard, because they didn't want to tarnish his legacy in case he couldn't physically go anymore. So it's a shame that, you know, he never did anything really much in, this, in, in WWF 
But his legacy, I think, speaks for himself outside of WWF as a member of the Freebirds and also his incredible body of work in Japan. But it does make you wonder what a very healthy, in his prime, Terry Gordy would look like against Taker and a lot of other guys in WWF at this time. Another legendary wrestler who died too young. Um, you know, he would pass a few years later in his early, early 40s. Very sad to see. It's, it's kind of sad. A lot of the wrestlers I've been working on lately in calls have passed away too early. And that's a shame. But highly recommend. Go down the Terry Gordy rabbit hole with him teaming with Stan Hansen and Williams in Japan. His body of work with the Freebirds and even his singles matches in Japan. Highly, highly recommend. You can find me on social media at be better gamer make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash be better gamer i stream tuesday and thursday evenings at 7 p.m until next time you know what to do keep watching all the wrestling thank you